the You know, every time I listen to that Over the Rainbow, I think of my days back in Vietnam when I was entertaining the troops back there. Uh, and I was with Mamie Van Doren entertaining with the troops, but I met a great lady. I've known her in Hollywood years ago when I was a child actor. And when I was in Vietnam, this lady was a nurse, actress, comedian, nurse. Could you imagine? She was in the military. I think she is the first actress ever served and stayed in Vietnam during the war. Those were my precious m memories of Vietnam when I met and worked with Martha Ray. And guess what? Today I have a gentleman who you've probably seen and heard him on the Howard Stern 40 or 50 times. And what it, what it is is that Mark Harris married Martha Ray. They called you the gigolo when that first when you married her. What is that all about? Tell me. Caused such a scandal, I didn't know what happened. I really didn't. Well, how did you meet her anyway? I mean, you really created a scene here in Beverly Hills. Without knowing. Without. Yes, if, if I tried, I couldn't have done a better home run. Everybody was talking about this gigolo from New York. Wherever you were from. Oh, yeah, right. I was doing a show in Vegas, putting Eddie Fisher together with Al Martino, 19-piece orchestra. And then Martha had asked to meet me. Uh -huh. um, she had certain problems that were going on, personally. And one thing led to the other, and uh, we got married very quickly. Quickly? Quickly. That's why they called you Gigolo Mark Harris. Yeah, I, I like it now. Now I want to preserve really? the title. You like that title? I think it's funny. I mean, okay. it's, you know. Because you know why? Because you're not. Right. See, that's why you're enjoying it. Exactly. I mean, I don't think a gigolo could be as lucky as I have been. Yeah, and yeah. good to her, too. She deserved it. She was Martha Ray, very special lady. She was special. Yes, very what good. What made it so special for Mark Harris? Because she, you're young. Martha Ray was, what? 33 years my senior. Uh -huh. But in growing up, of course, I grew up with the Martha Ray shows in the 1950s. Right. Knowing all about her, my late father born on the same day and year, serving in World War II when she came over to London. Uh -huh. And uh, you could see that all in the museum that I made in Fort Bragg with all the memorabilia. So you got all the memorabilia of Martha Ray when she passed away. Yes. And you did this. Yes. All her deeds uh, and work is on the military side right. is at Fort Bragg. She served in three wars. And I have all the Hollywood uh, uh -huh. memorabilia left. So now, uh, like you saw the Oscar, the first lady recipient of the Jean Herschel humanitarian right, Oscar, right. she was the first lady friar. So uh -huh. it's perpetually there on a 99-year lease. That was a great evening of the friars, that yeah. evening of Martha Ray. It was Get wonderful. It. Yes. Yeah, it was a good tribute. What makes Mark Harris drive so? I mean, you're on that Howard Stern show constantly talking and traveling around the world keep a place in Berlin. Yeah, I have an you apartment. You apartment in Berlin. Yes. You just got back from Rome. And you Paris. And Paris. And I'm a little tired. I give in. What makes you run the world so? I, I mean, like people. <laughs> I'm and from you got Brooklyn the house and I don't want to go back. And you got the house in Bel Air where Martha lived. Yes, but that fell in the earthquake and I uh, rebuilt, you rebuilt it. over 10,000 square feet. And you'll see that. It's a tribute to Martha. It's, right. very, it's a French Normandy chateau, and it's on the I like the, the word map. you're saying, tribute to Martha. She Ray. deserves it. You're making it. everything a tribute to her, which is very nice. She deserves it. To keep her uh, high profile ability could only serve good for this country. Right. Of course, there's no heroes today, uh, when you think of it, in, in the true sense of the word, like uh, we grew up with. Mm -hmm. There were heroes. Where's a hero today? Right, right. Mark. When you met Martha Ray, she was sick. She, she just, you know, she had a stroke. Yes, you she went in there and you helped this lady. Yes, she was just uh, paralyzed with the arm and the leg walking uh, with uh, a walker, c uh, doing her therapy twice a week. Right. But she was certainly in her right mind as the judge, uh, you know, gave every test. She was fine. And um, that's all yesterday. So right now, to be current, I want to try and develop the Broadway musical The Big Mouth. Mm -hmm. If it was Fanny Bryce and it was Funny Girl and Barbara Streisand, I truly believe 
It should be Martha Ray, uh -huh. the Big Mouth, mm -hmm. and Stocker Channing. Right, right. But one lady in Hollywood really stole your idea. You invited oh. her to up in Bel Air at your estate. No, Martha did, and okay. she was at Martha's house Beth, and took the Beth, treatment. Beth Midler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that too is old. It's news, old news. Okay. And that for the boys, uh, when I was asked by a it was inside, for the boys. Yeah, Inside Edition had asked me why do you think the movie was a flop, and I simply said, well, I think God punished her. Because it was Martha Ray's uh, life. Unless, Try to be. Unless you could show me another American comedian that served in three wars, had her own nightclub, everything they depicted in right. the storyline, then yes, Martha Ray was mm -hmm. that lady. Mark, you sing. Yes. You're a wonderful singer. I've seen you. You, uh, I've seen you in New York at a club yes. called. Uh, uh, Josephine Baker's uh, uh, Shea Josephine. Shea Josephine. Yeah, that's a while It's a ago. wonderful little room, chic and yes. and adorable. It's long and and it's it's an intimate room. And I sang in Washington, uh, and that was that was really nice. Mm -hmm. But I do the best with European audiences. Why is that? Because I sing in many languages, uh -huh. and they love uh, American ballads and Broadway and all the. But American songs. audiences are a little tough when it comes to that type of singing, like El Martino-ish, and uh, the you know with big voices. Right, right. A little tough. They they're into. Uh, I don't know that that audience is here. Uh, that audience is here anymore. Our society has changed. We've lost. Yes, yes. But the rest of the world worships our music. I mm -hmm. think even Saddam Hussein would like a good Marilyn Monroe number. <laughs> oh, well, I see. <laughs> you wrote a song, matter of fact, about. Well, tell me about. Oh, yes, Cl about tell Saddam me about Clinton. You're not very fond of Clinton, are you? Well, only because he reneged. Uh, but he saw, you know, when he got my faxes and letters and my protesting in Washington, he honored his letter that he wrote to me that he would give Martha, Martha the presidential Ray. medal yeah. of freedom, and so she did get it, and did that get it. was the bottom line. She did get yes. that. Even if it was two years later. We had them all at your house. Yes. It was a wonderful evening, too. So my feelings about Clinton today is only whatever's good for America. I have no malice or, you know, hatred toward him. Mm -hmm. He's our president, and I really wish him the best. Mm -hmm. You met, you've been traveling, you've been traveling, and you met, first of all, you were going with a violinist. This yes. guy. Yeah, first of all, I'm going <laughs> to let my audience know that you uh, you get on uh, Howard Stern and you say you're bisexual. Right. You were married. You were married. You have a daughter. I have a granddaughter. I have four daughters. Four daughters? Four daughters. Got any other hobbies? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> really? Four yeah, daughters. Okay. Really. I thought yeah. you had one. Well, you sound like Eddie Cantor. Four daughters. He had five. He had five? Okay. I don't think he was bisexual. No, no. But you are uh, a bisexual. Yes. The difference between he and I might be he strummed the banjo. How does that hit with your family, your daughters? and? Well, uh, they grew up with it. They love their daddy. I love my daughters. Uh -huh. And um, I think uh, it's, you know, it's nothing. Um, there's plenty of us around, but I've never intended to say. But you just came out of the closet. Or no, have I'm, you claustro been out of I'm claustrophobic, so no, no, no. I was never in a closet or a parade. Uh, the gay people think I'm bullshitting about being bisexual, right. and the straight people think I'm really gay. So I really don't care. You don't what call. They think. You don't it really call I, yourself whatever. I just thank God I'm enjoying the orgasm. That's it. I could care. <laughs> Enjoy the orgasm. <laughs> okay. Now you met this lovely lady. She's wonderful. In New York. Absolutely. In I can't get over it. In New York City. She's an in Italian Manhattan. lady in Manhattan. Born in America. Look at this. She's on the steps of Spanish at the Steps. Can I get a little close up of this? Maybe I'll do it like that. There we go. Oh, here we are. Okay. The other day. There when, we go. When there we, we go. When Lydia, we went down the. There she is with all the servicemen. Those are Italian men, huh? The Italian, Italian army. Army. When we went okay. down the. Uh, Auntie Mame. Yeah, really, <laughs> she is. And who is this right here? Look at this. That's Can the I get closest this? to Pavarotti I've ever May seen. I, this is a look-alike of Pav. Oh wow! This is in a restaurant. Yes, in and uh, three stories. In Rome. And I wound up singing there for four nights. Really? There you are with this lovely lady you are planning to give. She's a socialite in New York. Yes. Lovely, wonderful Why woman. Why does Mark Harris get tied up with all these wealthy, beautiful ladies? Now, come on, Mark. I said if one went shopping, they wouldn't find it. You I almost got know. tied up with Grace Robbins one yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. Carol Robbins' wife. Yeah, but I'm not into bondage. And but I must, <laughs> I, must, I must tell you, okay. you know, uh, I don't know. God has been very, very good to me, and I count my blessings. Uh -huh. I do. I'm very happy. Mark, uh, you went with this violinist for a while. David. That was on that Howard Stern. 
He was German. Yes. Was German. And you're Jewish. And German. And Jewish. German. German. Oh, German. Jewish. Jewish. Okay. Same. But you know, this man with the violin was good looking, and you oh, took him around the world. Well, he took me around oh, the world too. Sure, he wasn't poor. Oh, okay. My mother didn't raise stupid so children. So you had a good experience. You were on the Howard Stern. What did you talk about on the Howard Stern show? Sex. Yeah, what else? Sex? Sure. That's what Howard wishes to discuss. Why does Howard behave like that? Tell me. Because I think he's more into discussion than the act. <laughs> I see. He likes to, to tease. You know, it's to stir it up. He I likes mean, to know, it's He's really a great guy. Is he really? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I very, understand very he's kind. a very intelligent man. Give me three oh, words sure. to describe that man. Tall, dark, and ugly. Yeah. Hey, those are good words. <laughs> yeah. What can you, what you can't tease about Howard Stern? What you cannot tease about that man? Tell me. He's too alert. I mean, to tease, he always yeah. has a retort. So uh, I You've don't. You've called him many times on the to phone. To his face, of course, uh, and on the phone, whatever the case may be. Yes. I said I might be bisexual, but if you're interested, look elsewhere. I wouldn't touch you. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, we joke about that, but I mean it. I wouldn't touch him. He's a, was he a comedian ever? As a comic? No, or just... Uh, I don't think so. No. No, I don't think so. I see. You were in his movie. No, I wasn't. I would have been in the movie had there been a sequel, because the private parts, part one, right. was strictly about his rise the, right, to fame. Right. And the and second you came one along. would have been about yeah. the character. And now you're yeah. in his book. Both books. Both books. Uh, there's a third book coming out, I believe. So you're in, in that. In that book, too, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel you, everywhere you go, they talk about Mark Harris, Howard Stern. Wouldn't you rather be Mark Harris, Martha Ray, or just Har Mark well, Harris? Howard called me Mr. Martha Ray. I wore he that did call with, you for yeah. a long time. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I wear that with honor. That's not a problem. It isn't a problem? You know something, when you get to this age, uh, you really don't care that much. Uh, I'm very content. I'm very happy uh -huh. and uh, quite devoted to my children. And uh, I think I might get married again. I'm looking at you right now. Yeah. Where are you going for Mark Harris? Where are you going to go? You're going to marry the socialite? What are you going to do? I know you open business. I know you tried a television show. You're doing radio. You're doing everything. Where is, and you're doing a movie. Where is, and you're writing a book. Where are you want this to go, Mark? To Broadway for is a musical of for? Martha Ray's life, yes. After all, how many sequels can you have? Right. And The Lion King is wonderful, and it's a smash, but Martha, known as the Big Mouth, could roar a little louder. Uh -huh. Tell me something about Martha Ray, the last days of Martha Ray when you spent with her, because before she got into that, because I, cause well, I well remember. Well, she died of pneumonia, but right. uh, being but a double amputee was... She had double. It was quite heavy, quite uh, distressing, but... She was atrophied, and she couldn't bend her uh, neck anymore to look, and uh, I told her it was vascular surgery. She never knew that uh, her legs were removed, and um, the pain, I told her, which was phantom pain, right. as if the legs were there, right. was vascular bypass surgery. Right. And you know, being a veteran, that Martha Ray won the contest uh, in World War II of having the most beautiful legs. Sensational. And she went overseas and gave it to Betty Grable. Vitality. This lady had such vitality oh. on that stage. Moved, sang, she great, was and a good actress. Very Not just a great comedian, yeah. but a good actress. Yeah, no, she, good comedians everything about her. Good, everything about her was real professional. So you're trying to bring this forward to let the world know that Martha Ray is well. I think uh, the generation of today, the young, don't the young know. Generation they don't know. Should understand what American jazz was, and Martha was a very big part. Good of jazz that. singer. Yeah. Wonderful really. jazz singer. She had a club in in Miami years ago. They I put used that to go in the movie too. The five yes, o'clock club. The five o'clock club. Mm -hmm. And I used to go there a lot when I worked Miami Beach, mm -hmm. and I worked clubs when I was a kid. I was only eighteen, nineteen, working clubs around, and I used to drop in this room, and it was open all night practically. And uh, all the stars used to go there, just come to visit Martha Ray. Martha so started a lot of those she comedians. She did. She was actually the beginning. Even Cindy uh, Adams was a stand-up comedian in those days. She was? Yes. I didn't know at that. At 5 o'clock. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Cindy Adams was there five, I didn't at know At 5 o'clock. Really? Mm -hmm. What's your book going to be about, Mark? 
Well, if my life continues along these lines, I guess it's going to be the singing gigolo. I, I singing <laughs> gigolo. I wouldn't what know what else to call it. Singing gigolo. Yeah, I still see. Sing. You're laughing at all this. Yeah, you're, my audience absolutely. is looking at you right now and saying, "God," but you're saying. I guess they the think I'm crazy. Singing gigolo. Well, no, the singing gigolo. See, you're not taking it serious. Life is not serious, which is good. I think yeah. it's wonderful to live that way. I really do. Well, you know, my late mother, and she died young, but she said, you know what, Mark, uh, you may never become a star, but you're going to live like one. And looking at the stars um, of yesterday or today, a lot right. are very unhappy. My life is very fulfilled, my personal life, and um, I have no problem with not becoming a star, uh -huh. you know. so. If it happens at this point, it, it would only be Absolutely. Uh, That's the gravy, way to look at you know? It. Absolutely. That's all. What has been the hardest for Mark Harris in life? Since you Besides growing up with a cerebral palsy brother, so um, my mother getting sick, taking care of her, putting my brother away, because uh -huh. she took care of him, and then um, Martha's illness when we got married. Who would ever know three years later she would lose both legs? So. You know. And now you're here in Hollywood, back in town. You're going back to Vegas. Pick up a lady friend of yours very who's close very friend, ill sure. right yeah. now. You're going to pick her up in the car, she can't take board her to L.A. You're helping yeah. always these people in life. So you are... I, you only, are, I mean, it's a friend. It's, you know... Yes, but you're you a you helper, no? see, and you use that word gigolo. Who and cares? There's probably some very good gigolos. I mean, uh, you know, years ago in my generation, if uh, a woman was... Um, you know, a slut or whatever, and she was still a good mother. What was she supposed to be punished? Mm -hmm. She did her best. So if they want to call me Gigolo, just spell it right. Mm -hmm. Who cares? I really don't. Never did. I read those tabloids. I didn't know uh -huh. who they were talking about, but it sounded like a soap how opera. Does your, how does your feel about seeing your name in the tabloids? I mean, people are, you know, oh, look at this guy right here, you know, married Martha Ray. And matter of fact, you got all the money. Hey, let's face it. 75%. She left 75% of millions. She left millions, beautiful home up there in Bel Air, and the daughter got nothing, right? No, she got fifty thousand on a no contest clause. The estate was. Oh, she did get fifty thousand. Yeah, thanks to me. Oh. Two point four. Oh, you giving it to her? Huh? Get rid of her. I mean, the you know Martha did that codicil for me, and when her lawyer said, "Is there anything else you'd like to leave her, Martha?" Martha just said, "Yes, my stroke." <laughs> so yeah. she was a comedian to the end. She was very she funny. Was funny at two of the end. Very funny. Yes. Isn't that amazing? So the whole thing was 2.4 million, and whatever I was left, 75 percent plus 100 percent of the house, which fell in the earthquake, right. is now standing. All the money she left me built this huge right. mansion. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. But the book, the book is going to be interesting. Oh, this I young think man so. marrying this lovely, wonderful lady of great talent, Mark Harris. Piece of know. America. Huh? Piece of America. Piece of America. A lot of people don't know. Looking back, would you do it the same way? Yes. I you mean, wouldn't change I, it anyway? It was never in my control. I mean, it was just, uh, it happened, and it was natural. A matter of fact, right now, being with this lady since November and just returning from Europe, uh, I would say it's, it's wonderful, but I was not looking to get married, and then I remember, but I wasn't looking to get married then either. Mm -hmm. So all these things just come into my life. Don't you want to ask me what happens to the bisexual part? Yeah, I'm it, going doesn't to. Go <laughs> it doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. It's still there. It's still there, and I told Gilda about it, and of course she went to she a therapist, and yes. the therapist said, either you handle it or you ignore it. She seems very New York. Very. I'm looking at her right very, now. She's very, very, very uh, Auntie Mamish. Yeah, Rosalind Russell. Rosalind Russell, yes. Very sophisticated. She so wears, she she wears a cross, live, love, and laugh. Say, well, yeah. you're living with a woman who's sophisticated, tastes life, travels around the world, so she has no hang-ups with that, no. of being uh, bisexual. Uh, and she's not. That's right. No. About, no. about but me. With you. No. Yeah. She seems she's having a good time, right, th with all these she's men. She's wonderful. She's really yeah. great. Uh -huh. We're going to go to the Cannes Film Festival this year. 
Is she married before, was she? She was married twice. She was married twice. She has children. How about the kids? Yes. Do they accept you, and what's happening? I don't know. I never met the daughter, and uh, I do know that the daughter is writing me a letter of thank you as I've extended the invitation for her to join us in uh -huh. Cannes. Uh -huh. So, uh, of course, I shall respond. You go to Cannes every year, don't yes. you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why is that, Mark? Why do you go to the Cannes? Because I parle beaucoup en français. J'ai visité Monte Carlo aussi, uh, Genoa, Italy. I, I love Europe. I speak the language. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's nice to celebrate and have people over the apartment that I rent there every year. Mm. But living in New York, and you're going to move back because she lives in New York I've City. I've been away 17 New York years. City. Manhattan, Seven, 17 that's the place years. to live. Yeah, they tell Mark, me that. that's the place to live. Manhattan, not California or Paris or Rome. Ma if you have a millions and millions of dollars, Manhattan's the place to live. So I shouldn't get an apartment in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> That's where no. you're originally from? Yes. Is that where you're yes, from? Really? Yes, yes, yes. What did you do growing up, as growing up, as Mark Harris? Uh, how was Mark Harris growing up? Oh, well, my, who was he? my father was a bookie, my mother was a hairdresser. That's probably what made me bisexual, the two worlds colliding. Really? I don't know. Oh, interesting. Uh, and I shined shoes, and I went to school, and I sang, and I sang. I thought I'd grow up to be Eddie Fisher, and thank God, ah, thank God. I you didn't. wanted to be Eddie Fisher? Oh, well, in those days, he was popular, you but know. But he was off-meter. He was an off-meter singer. Yes. He yes, couldn't yes. sing on meter. Yeah. Eddie Fisher, you had to count beats. <laughs> I well, used to work with him. I know. have rhythm. I, so oh, I'm, you have rhythm. I don't have to work. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's how Mark Harris wanted to be, like Eddie Fisher singer, huh? Yes, but everything changed in the 1960s. Did you work the islands, Long Islands, and, you know, Catskill up in Catskill Mountains. Catskills? Did you work Catskill? Yes. Everybody wanted me for their daughter. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's how I learned to speak Jewish. Ah. You do speak Jewish very well. Yes. I introduced you to Shelley Winters, and you spoke Jewish to this No lady. problem. Le no problem. Wow. You re how many languages did you speak? German, French, English. I start to learn Italian, and uh -huh. I could curse in Farsi. The audience <laughs> heard that already. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> but uh, a smattering of this or that. Uh -huh. You did a TV show for a while. You're going to do your own or something like that. Yes. And matter of fact, you're probably still going to do it. Who knows? Whatever. I don't know. You yeah. know, I really don't know. And sometimes I get less to care. I would be more interested to develop Martha's story. I see. That's the main thing for that you is, right that's now. That is. That's absolutely the main so thing. So you're keeping yourself open yes, with that. Yes, exactly. For a, a, it's going to be for the Broadway show and then a movie. I think the same lines as Funny Girl. Sure. Uh-huh. Funny Girl. Same thing. Yeah. She was a Fanny funny Fanny Bryce was Martha's Mar heroine. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I want to go back to Mark Harris. When you first knocked and went to see Martha Ray first, you stayed there with her That when you first saw her in her wheelchair. Is that it? Yes. Tell me about uh, it. Yes, we spoke, of course, and she had a lot to say, and uh, her hair She was, was in good mood then. Great, great. She wasn't... Smoking like Betty Davis. Right, right. Going on and, and on. And drinking a little, maybe. Uh, not that I no? saw. No, okay. not that I saw okay. at, at that meeting, but in the evening when we would go out to Mateo's... You'd uh, take her to she, Mateo's yes, on she, Westwood. Yes, and she uh -huh. would have her vodka and cranberry juice. Right. Yes, and then I started drinking vodka and cranberry juice. Right. But I knew I wasn't an alcoholic. It wasn't right, my problem. Right, right, right. And you went in there and fixed her hair. Yes. You love to fix Martha's hair. You made her look she, beautiful. Well, first of all, you had beautiful You got her out of the house, and that was it. And we never stopped going for, you know, shy four years. Because she was in the house for a yes. while. Yes. Nobody came to see her. No one. Just her nurse. And uh, the nurses of that day was ripping her off, stealing. We caught one, got some stuff back. How about her daughter? Daughter never came to see her. Why did Martha Ray hate the daughter so much? When Martha came back from her first tour of duty, as she told me in 1964, uh, there was a protest in this country, as you remember. Yes, of course. And um, Jane Fonda. You mean protest Fonda, of Jane Vietnam, Fonda, of course. Yes, Jane Fonda was, you know, on the other side, oh, and course. Martha was on our side. So the war, right or wrong, was not the issue. There was a war going on, not declared OK. But um, her daughter marched against her. And um, if there are protesters, well, that's one voice. But your own child? Yeah. I mean, you asked me a moment ago, how do my children deal with my bisexuality? Right. Well, obviously, they're not marching and protesting and screaming. I'm still daddy. Yes, you yes. Know. 
that, not to uh, mix the Vietnam War with right. the bicycle. Jane well, Fonda upset me because I was entertaining the troops like Martha. Well, she's there. not upsetting Mr. Turner. Well, no. Well, <laughs> who cares about Mr. Turner? I'm just saying she upset me because she came. You no, know, for this country, this is America. You know. And these young boys fought. Maybe the war wasn't whatever it was, but at the moment, the war was there for this country. But you know what? We had to be there. You know what? Honestly speaking, we have to now go forward. We have a yes. bigger threat. We have a bigger threat in the world. We do, don't we? Biological weapons and things. There's a maniac out there, isn't he? There's more than him. There's lunatics in this country. Yes, true. The white look supremacist the, group, where, the are they, where is their head? Well... What, is that, that, what man, is that about? They're crazy. That man who's stirring the pot right now, this Kenneth Starr, is... I think, I think Mrs., uh, the president's wife hit it right on the nose. I believe, I actually believe, there is a white supremacist that is starting here in America. There has always been, and it's more vocal with Clinton and liberal Hollywood, and I'm not taking right. anybody's side. If I was, I, I would have to take the liberal side. I don't believe in burning crosses or killing people. Right. They are absolutely lunatics. Yes. I mean, abortions. They, they, Look what, at they those worship clinics. Hitler. Yeah. Where do you have to go? Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. So, um, abortion, that's a whole other issue, and that's. A woman who's carrying, it's her issue. Yes. It's not uh, a yes. political issue. Yes. It shouldn't be. Not at all. In You're America, we should separate, you know, church and state. That's how we're founded. S clubs you're going to work at all in town? In Europe, I enjoy it. In town, you I haven't performed here. How about the Friars some evening? How about, uh, or, you know, there's a wonderful little room in Palm Springs. Brand new room. Jim Bailey's there right now. Uh, I understand uh, Tony Martin was there two weeks ago. Just saw him at lunch. At uh, the Friars. Friars. And uh, matter of fact, we're doing our show here at the Friars right around the corner. We're in Beverly Hills High School. That's where we are right now. And I must tell you, uh, Milton Burl is going to be there doing some stuff. Every, every big star is going to Palm Springs in this little room. It's called uh, Basin Street West. Oh. It's cheap. And Mark Harris, you'd be wonderful. Get yourself a group, and the well, audience would love you. It's an older audience. It's great. Yeah. They would love you. Well, maybe. Because your act is geared for that. You've got to keep s in front of an audience. Yeah, I love it. You I sang on Howard Stern's show at all? Yes, you I sang singing? live a few weeks ago. Uh, and that was really You did? Experience. What did you do? I don't think anybody sang live on radio since Kate Smith. Okay, Smith. <laughs> I did a beautiful love song. On Howard Stern show? Yes. Did you really? As the violinist played. Oh. It was really nice. I see. Not as love as a many spender thing. I did that the other night in Rome. Oh, did you I really? I did, yeah. You enjoy traveling around. You enjoyed Rome. You had with this lovely lady now. Boy. She's fantastic. She looks great. She's surrounded herself a lot of men here, though. That's Mark. a whole table of uh, Russians. Oh, are I they? was singing Ochinchonia. Uh, uh -huh. All those big dark eyes. Except right. for that lady. She's from Colorado. The blonde. The blonde. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. You seem like you're having a good time traveling. Couldn't be better. Mark Harris, it's always great talking to you, I must tell Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you're, if you weren't, if you weren't an actor before, you know, you were an actor. Yes, if well, I weren't. tried for it, but... You I did try. I tried, and uh, I didn't make it, and uh, c'est la vie, okay, yeah. next. That's right. That's the way so to look at it. That's how I look at it. Yeah. Thank you, Mark Harris. Thank I enjoyed you. it this afternoon. You're wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, yeah, a great... Great joy talking to you today. Yeah, it's very nice to be here, <laughs> absolutely. Chit-chat, chit-chat, chit-chat. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay.